Granny's Country Cooking, and I am Granny, and I am so glad you're here today. We are going to be making Granny's Country Style Fluffy Biscuits. Very easy, very fun, and we'll be starting that in just a few minutes. I'll get things set up in just a minute. But first, I wanted to show you a new style apron. This one is called the Country Style Apron. I do have other aprons that you see in my other videos, and those are called the chicken feed aprons. Those aprons are actually designed from the 1800s of the prairie women that were in the frontier wearing their aprons. And I do make all of these myself. I do design them. And I also design my, my own outfits, too, every day. But I have many of you writing in wanting to know how you can get some of these beautiful aprons. Well, this one is for the ladies that like the fluffy country ruffles on their aprons. And the other one is more of a simple style, but still country. We are going to be selling these in the future. We are getting towards working towards doing this and we will get it all ready to go one of these days and I will let you know. But this is a new style that I designed and we will be having those available soon. So we will get started on our biscuits in just a minute and we will see you in just a second. Be right back with you. Thank you. Okay, we are ready. Now remember when we first get started, we always have clean hands and I've just washed my hands. And also, it may help you to have a little bucket in your sink with soapy water and a little bit of bleach, and that helps to keep the dishes clean and sparkly and free of germs. But I have this ready so that when I have anything ready to wash, I just put it in the bucket and it's ready to go. Okay, another reason we like to wear aprons is it keeps our food cleaner. Because if you have little furry pets running around like we do here, then sometimes putting an apron on over your clothes will have cleaner food. As well as you have so much fun in your food, you get a little messy, and so you wipe your hands off really good. So anyway, we are started. Now what we are making is a small pan of homemade biscuits. Now this is a, just a regular pie pan. It's very, very old, and I love to cook with it. This was my mother's, possibly my grandmother's, but I know this has been around since mm, maybe the 1950s, and I'm going to use this one today. I love this little old scratched up pie pan. I just love it. Now our ingredients today is going to be regular flour. This is just regular flour. We are going to be using baking powder. Now, when you buy the baking powder can, it won't look like this. I just love to put it in my little antique jars. But this is baking powder. And then we are going to use salt. And I like to use sea salt because it gives a better flavor. And I just hope it's a little bit more healthy. Then we're going to be using Crisco, and my favorite is the Butter Crisco. It just gives it a little more of a better flavor. So we'll be using Crisco. Then in our pie pan that I just showed you, we're going to be using some corn oil. And I like, you can also use bacon grease, but I don't always have a lot of bacon grease around. Now the old timies, ladies used to put bacon grease in the bottom of their pie pans, which is out of this world delicious. But today, and always, usually, I use the corn oil. It has a lighter taste and it keeps the biscuits from sticking. Then, we will be using a nice big fork. You don't have to have a pastry cutter this time. And we will be using milk. So, regular milk. Now, the, the pioneer women, the frontier women, called this milk that I'm going to use today sweet milk because they either had buttermilk back then or they had sweet milk or sometimes their milk would sour 
but they also used sour milk to make cakes with. So this is going to be called the sweet milk. And we're going to be making just regular, just everyday, easy, easy biscuits to make. So let's get started. Okay, now the first thing we're going to do, our recipe says two cups of flour. Now you want, you want to sift it, but you won't be dipping it into the cup. It's a little bit of a different measurement. What we're going to do, this is my little flour container, and scoop my pan over a little bit. Now I'm going to be just digging in, making it pretty level, and then scraping it off with my clean fingers. So that is one cup. Okay. Now we're going to get two cups. We're going to kind of pat it in a little bit. You don't want to pack it. Just kind of pat it in a little bit and get it kind of level. Two cups. Okay. Now this is where your aprons come in handy. Because you get flour on you and then you just wipe it off. It doesn't hurt a thing. Okay, now let's put our baking powder and our salt into the flour. And it's good to sift flour, even though the bag may say pre-sifted. I still like to use the sifter. And the reason why is because I have found pieces of the package in the flour. Or I have found uh, maybe the flour got a little wet on the bottom and you didn't realize it and you've got lumps. So I love to use a sifter. Now there's something I wanted to mention to you guys. Now some of you like to wear fingernail polish. I love fingernail polish. But when you're making bread with your hands or cooking with your hands, you want to take your fingernail polish off because I have really found little chips of fingernail polish in the cooked biscuits. So we do not want that. Okay, we've got two cups of flour. Now we are going to be using three teaspoons of baking powder. Now this is a teaspoon. There is a tablespoon measure that is much, much bigger. It's not the big one. It's the one teaspoon that will say on there. Then you measure three teaspoons. Now I just dig in and wipe it off again. Now also the sifter helps with the baking powder or baking soda because they have lumps in them and you don't want to buy into a biscuit and get a, a lump of baking powder in your mouth. Oof, awful. Okay, that's one. Now we're going to do two. And we are going to do three. Okay. Now we'll put our little lid back on. These little jars are about 100 years old. But I really, really enjoy using them. I really, really love the old style of cooking and enjoying all their, their little idiosyncrasies. Now, the salt is one teaspoon. We can use the same teaspoon. Sometimes in other measuring type things, you don't want to use the same teaspoon, like if you have vanilla or something in, in it with some type of thing, like cakes or something. You don't want to use the same little spoon, but this time it's going to be okay. That's one teaspoon of salt. Oh, right. Now, we are going to sift this because the next step will be Crisco. So let's sift this in there. And you don't want to go too wild because then it just flies all over everywhere. But remember, you have your aprons on, so it sure makes it a lot easier. And I love these little sisters. Now, you can buy a more modern type sisters, but any sister should work. Now, if you can see what I'm doing with my fingers, I'm kind of pressing gently because the baking powder had some lumps. So that's what we wanted to do. Now, we are going to measure our Crisco. 
Now what I like to do, this is one fourth of a cup. Remember this is a one cup, this is one fourth. So let's wet this little cup and it makes the Crisco come out a little easier. You don't have to just scrape a lot. Now I dumped some of the little drops, which is okay. Now we're going to put in the Crisco. Now I used to be so bad with Crisco that I would get it all over me, up to my elbows even. But I'm doing a little bit better nowadays and it's, it's fun to use a little knife. Tap it in there like this and you don't get it all over you so bad. Okay, now we're going to push this down. Crisco tends to get a little air holes in there. So we want to make sure we get all of that Crisco in there. If we get a little bit too much, we can always scrape it off the top. And that's going to work. Okay, now you go around the sides. You scrape around the sides like this. And it comes out in a pretty good lump. And if you can see, my little measuring cup is pretty clean. It came out pretty good. Okay, I'm going to use my finger. And I'm going to scrape this off. Now, you can use any kind of bowl because you just want a deep enough, okay, apron time. You just want a deep enough bowl that you've got room to cook in, to mash, and to stir, and this sort of thing. It can be any kind of bowl. I love these pottery bowls, but you can use any kind of metal, plastic, any kind. Okay, now we're going to use a, just a big fork. And you don't have to have any fancy equipment when you're cooking. A lot of the frontier women, they just had what they had basic, and they made the most magnificent food. Now I'm going to take the fork and not mash into the Crisco first. I'm going to put it in the flour mixture to get it kind of powdery. Now the frontier women, they used lard. They didn't have the Crisco, but they usually either bought the lard in a lard bucket, or they had their own pigs and they rendered it. They cooked down the fat and poured the grease into a pan and let it congeal. Now that is what lard is, and people still today use lard. And yes, you can use lard. It is fine. And it's just maybe a little not as healthy, but it's okay if you want to use lard. Now what I'm doing is I'm blending the Crisco with the flour mixture. It's got the powder, the baking powder, and the salt. And what I'm doing is mashing all of the Crisco into tiny, tiny lumps. You don't want a big hunk of Crisco. So we are going to mash this amount. And I'll move that over a little bit so that you can see a little bit better. I picked this bowl today so that you could see a little better. It's not quite as deep. And I'm just mashing with a plain old fork. And yes, you can use the pastry cutters and things, but you don't have to to make good food. Now, if I'm making pies or things like that, I do like to use a pastry cutter because it does make the, the, the flour mixture a little finer. But with biscuits, it's fine to have just a few lumps in there, not big ones, but a few lumps in there. So we are going to continue to work with this and get all of the lumps out. And I have been asked by some of you readers and watchers of videos and on the Instagram and also Facebook, I have been asked to explain some little stories about some of the elderly ladies that I was raised up with. And I had elderly aunts 
that when I was a young girl, maybe from 5 to 16 years old, they were in their 80s and 90s, and they were from the late 1800s or and the early 1900s. And they were cooks on either campfires, uh, they were cooks with wood stoves, or and also with modern stoves. And so I have so many, many wonderful stories. One of my aunts actually had an old cowboy hotel, literally. It was two stories high, and they had no electricity. They used the uh, kerosene lamps or the oil lamps, and she cooked for all of the cowboys that would be coming into their little town. And she had their uh, meals and their, their rooms. And I remember going uh, throughout uh, for many, many times, going through the old hotel, the cowboy hotel, and it had the old wooden staircases and all the little steps and everything was just plain hardwood. And each of the rooms were just real uh, simple, I guess you could say. Not necessarily plain, but they were simple. And they actually did have the little uh, bowl, the wash stands, and the wa water features where they would wash up and everything. And she cooked for how, whoever was in three times a day, I believe. And I remember seeing her little bitty kitchen, and it probably was not as big as my kitchen. I don't know how she did it, but she was wonderful cook. And her husband was ill a lot. And so she pretty much ran the hotel and did all the cooking and, and the cleaning and washing sheets and all that sort of thing. So I just love to share some of the stories about the, the wonderful little elderly people that helped to raise me. And I remember watching her cook and learning things from her. We, we lived a little ways away, so I didn't get to be with her all the time. But when I did, I tried to glean everything I could from her. Wonderful, wonderful, sweet, wonderful, gentle lady. All right, now I want you to see that this has been mixed and it is ready. Now it's kind of maybe has a few little lumps, which is okay, not a lot, but they're not any big lumps. And that's what we're going to add our milk. And remember, it'll be sweet milk. So we're going to set this down, and I will be right back with the milk. Thank you. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Now, the milk that I like to personally use for my household is I like to use lactose-free milk. Some of our family has tummy problems, and this is wonderful, and I use the 2% milk fat, and it still makes magnificent gravy, magnificent biscuits. Now, another time, we will make buttermilk biscuits. They're not that much different, but we will make them. And this time, we're just going to use regular milk. Now, if you want to use just regular whole milk, then that is just fine. It'll still work. Um, I like to use the 2% because it has a little bit of the creaminess in it, but it doesn't have the full fat. But you can use that. Now, the only thing that might not work too well is the skim milk. You need a little bit of that creaminess. So, what we're going to do is measure three-fourths of a cup, but we may need to add a little bit of a few drops to get that texture of a stirring. Now I'm going to pour this in. Now when you're measuring liquid, you want to see first where you're going to go up to, but then you want to get down eye level. Have it on a flat surface like this so that when you're pouring, it won't have a strange measuring. Okay, we're going to measure three-fourths and I'm going to try to get it in there. Now I'm going to get down eye level, and that's perfect. So we're going to pour it in. I 
I'm going to use just a nice regular big round spoon. If you like a bigger one, that's fine. And if you also make a bigger batch, maybe two pans or whatever, then you might want to use a bigger spoon. Okay, here we go. We're going to pour it in. Now remember, this is called from scratch. That means you didn't start out with a mix of some sort. Um, and another thing is I don't use the self-rising flour. I've always used just basic, basic ingredients. Um, I like to know how much rising I've got in it and how much of the ingredients is in it so that I know if I want more or a little bit less. I don't want it already pre-put in there. Now, if you do, that's fine. You go, you go right ahead and it doesn't hurt, but you have to be careful when you're making it. So, all right. Now, this is, let me show you, is still not exactly what we want. It's starting to get the big bigger lumps, but we want a little more liquid. Now, I know it sounds weird, but some days when you have more humidity, or it's a little drier, or your measurements might be a little bit off, you may need a little bit more milk or a little bit less. Now, if you happen to accidentally get too much flour in here, not an overly amount, but just a little bit, then you can always add a little extra milk. Now, if you didn't get quite enough flour, you can add a little flour to this mixture and it'll still be fine. Okay, now it's getting a little better. We added a little bit, a few drops to it. Now, it's still got a lot of the dryness in there and but it's coming together pretty good. I'm going to keep stirring this. I think that's going to be all we're going to need. I think it's going to be okay. Now, it looks strange right now. I want you to see it because now we're going to mash it with our hands, but it's called kneading, and it's spelled K-N-E-A-D-I-N-G, kneading the dough. So that's what we're going to do. Now, one of the things that I found out that the old frontier women is what they did was they would not knead biscuit dough in the pastry cloth because it would get too much flour in the biscuit dough from the pastry cloth or adding flour. What they would do is they would knead it in the bowl. And so that's what I was raised doing. So I want you to see, we're just going to get our hands in it. And you're, what you're doing is trying to stir this up a little bit and mash it together. Now, it's almost a little bit too sticky. So I'm going to just get a teensy bit of flour to kind of help it out. And you're not getting an overly amount of flour into the biscuits. Now, when you're making homemade bread with yeast, that's a different thing. But when you're making the biscuits that don't have the yeast in it, you don't want a lot of flour. Maybe just enough to kind of knead it. Just a few little sprinkles, a little bit more. And yeah, my hands are getting messy, but it's okay. It's fine. Okay, now it's getting perfect. I won't have to add any more flour. All right. Now I want you to see what I'm doing. What I'm doing is I'm taking my hands like this, and I'm going under it and pulling it, mashing it with the palm of my hand, and I'm rolling and pushing. Then I'm turning the ball with my fingers, and I'm pulling it forward towards me and pushing with the heel of my hand. 
Then I'm picking it up with my fingers and I'm pushing with like my fist part. Now we're turning this little ball around and you're pushing. You pick that up and you push. I'm going to set this down and I'm going to show you how pretty this little ball of biscuit dough is. Now this is a very small batch, but it will feed quite a few people because we're going to make about eight biscuits out of this. And if there's two people, that should be plenty, or if you're big eaters, or if you've got uh, a table full of people, you want to make several batches of this to feed everybody because they're going to taste so good, they're going to want more than one biscuit. So I'm going to get this mashed just a teensy bit more and then I'm going to put some of this away and get the pastry cloth out and show you what we do next. So I'll be with you in just a minute and I'll get my hands cleaned up. Okay, we're back. I have my pastry cloth all set up. I did sprinkle some flour on the top but we're not going to be kneading that dough. We're just going to be placing it, mashing it down, and rolling it just a little bit. So let's get our little ball. Now what I'm going to do is turn the bottom and make that pretty top, just like that, okay? Now what we're going to do is it's very important important not to overwork this dough because that's when it gets tough. If you have too much flour or you keep rolling it around and this sort of thing, uh, you're going to get too much flour in it and it makes it tough. So we are going to get a nice little rolling pin. You can use any kind you want. I like to use the kind where I put the little sock on, where it's just a regular rolling pin. I put the sock on because it keeps it from sticking so much. This was my mother's, and my mother used this in our small bakery in my home when we were growing up. And I started helping my mother at three years old in her little bakery in our home. Loved it. And this, this little rolling pin made hundreds of pies and cakes and everything you can imagine, and rolls and things. Now what I'm gonna do, is roll it just gently in some flour just to get it kind of kind of settled where it's not going to stick. Now the biscuit dough on sweet milk you want thicker because then if it's too thin it's not going to rise like you want. So I will show you how thick to make it. Now as you can see I'm very gentle, very gentle with the dough. We don't want to overwork it. That's enough for right now. Now, from, for me and for what I was taught, I like to bend my finger and make the biscuits that tall. So I'm going to check, mash my finger down, and check to make sure that it's that tall. And that's exactly what it is. Now, this doesn't look like very many biscuits, but it will be at least seven or eight biscuits. Now, before you put the biscuit in the pan, what I'm going to do is put oil. And I have found that about two tablespoons of corn oil really works well. Now, you may need a little bit more, so we'll, we'll see in just a minute. But we're going to put about two tablespoons. There's one, and we'll try another one. And if we have to add a little bit more, it won't hurt a thing, I promise. Now something I want you to realize is that your oven should be heating. It should be getting hot at 450. You don't want to put biscuits into a cold oven or into an oven that's half Heat it. You want to check your oven and make sure that it's 450. That's a very hot oven, but this helps the biscuits to poof and rise and cook quickly inside. Now we've got two tablespoons, so I'm going to 
swim it around. And as I've taught my grandchildren and other kids how to make biscuits, I call it swimming it around in it. So we're going to do that. Now something I want to explain that's kind of comical is you do not have to have fancy equipment to make good food. This is an old tomato paste can. This is a green chilies can, washed and both ends cut out. And I like this size. Now this is the old tiny size. Now on the inside it has the little donut hole, but you can take that out and use this size. Now if you use this size, you will have less biscuits. If you use this size, you will have a little less than that, but nice size biscuits. If you want to have smaller biscuits, you'll have more biscuits. Some people like smaller biscuits where they're covered in butter, but I like the medium size, so no fancy equipment. Now you're going to take, this kind of is a lumpy end, so I'm gonna take the smoother end, and I'm going to get it in the flour real good. Now we're going to go around the curved edges and we're going to cut, kind of mash and twist. We're going to do that right there. We'll put them in the pan in just a minute. And each time you may need to dip it in the flour. Now this doesn't look like very many biscuits, but don't worry. Okay, we're tapping them out. We're going to go like this. We're going to go around the edge now, unless you're in an extreme hurry, you don't have to rush, rush, rush. So don't worry, just enjoy your cooking, and it's so much fun. Okay, now we're going to go on the edges. Now the dough that is left, we will make into more biscuits. Okay, now I'm gonna make one right out of the center. It's gonna have a few little weird sides, but it's okay. I'll show you how pretty it will be in a minute. Now, I can't make any pretty ones. Now, what you want to do is don't roll it around in the flour. Pick it up gently out of the flour, like this. Now, we're going to mash and knead it all together. We're going to make this lump look really pretty. Now, what I'm doing is I'm rolling it toward the center, turn, roll toward the center, turn, roll toward the center, turn, roll, and what I'm doing is smashing all the bits together, making it be a lot more, uh, not lumpy in the biscuit. I'm, I'm rolling and turning, and it's easy for me to go fast because I've done this all my life. But I want to go slow and show you how I'm rolling towards the middle, turn, roll towards the middle and mash it, turn, roll towards the middle, mash and turn, roll towards the middle, mash and turn. And as you can see, we have a beautiful little ball back there. All right. Now let's spread that flour around again. I'm just going to tap it a little bit on the top. Now I'm going to measure with my finger. Remember, we're making it that high, like that. Okay. And that's perfect. I'm going to mash it a little bit flatter because that middle was a little bit taller. Okay. All right. Right down straight in the middle. Beautiful biscuit. Ooh, that's a pretty one. Now this we're going to do again. We're going to turn it into a beautiful biscuit. Now I'm going to roll with my fingers, roll my fingers, roll my fingers, roll, 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 and it's all kind of going towards the middle there, towards the middle. The top looks really pretty, towards the middle. Towards the middle, 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 middle. And you're trying to make it like a little pretty round ball. Now there is 
a pretty biscuit. Now let's see if we can get it kind of flattened just a little bit. And that one's going to be perfect. Okay. Now what we're going to do, it's a little bit bigger than normal, but it'll be pretty. Now remember we have the two tablespoons of oil in here. And as I tell the grandkids, you take the top, swim it around, and turn it over. You want that oil to be shiny on the top of the biscuit. Now we're going to get this one, nice pretty, ah, nice pretty biscuit. That does happen, so hang on. So this is the top. We're going to roll it, swim it around in the oil, and we're going to kind of put it like this. Beautiful biscuit. Here's this one. Now this is the top. We're going to put it in the oil, kind of swim it around in there, and make the top shiny. You want that oil on the top, because what it does is it gives a nice little crunchy crust. Delicious. Okay, here we go. We got some more. We're going to swim it around, turn it over, because you've got oil on the bottom too, and it's going to make a crunchy crust on the bottom. Now we're going to do this right here, swim the top, turn it over. We're going to swim the top, turn it over to the bottom, and then we've got one more to go, and we're going to swim it, and then flip it over like that. Now let's see how many our biscuits make. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We made seven. Now, if you wanted to make them a little bit smaller, you would probably have eight, maybe nine. But anyway, these are going to be beautiful biscuits. Now, we're going to put this in the already heated oven at 450 for 20 minutes. Depending on your oven, maybe a little bit more or a little bit less, but you want a nice golden color. So that's what we're going to do, and we'll be right back. I'll be right back with you. Thank you. Hey, I am back, and I'm just getting the biscuits out of the oven. So keep watching, and we'll get those biscuits out, and you will see how pretty they look. Woo! Look at these beautiful golden biscuits. Now what I'm going to do is paint them, or really just slurp on the butter. What I did was I melted a half a stick of butter, and now I'm going to just dab and get that butter everywhere. Now, when I say everywhere, I mean everywhere. We're going to go down the sides, on all of the sides. Do you see how big and fluffy this biscuit's got? And you can hear that butter sizzling in the bottom of the pan. It's still so hot. Now, remember, you are cooking these at about 20 minutes uh, at 450. Now, I could have taken them out a little bit sooner so they wouldn't be quite as brown, but that doesn't hurt because the insides are totally cooked and not going to be gummy. I hate that. And they will be nice and crunchy on the top. And in a minute, we will take these biscuits out and put butter in the middle and let you see how pretty. Now, I'm going to keep painting and dripping this butter all over these biscuits. Now about half a stick is good for one pan. And if you're making two pans, then you can get a stick of butter. Now what I like to do sometimes, you've seen it on Instagram, is I like to do lots of biscuits ahead. And what I try to do is if I know I have company coming, then I will make maybe a pan, a big pan of biscuits per day that they're going to be here. And I made five big, huge pans of biscuits. Now I'm going to just pour and get
get it kind of in between and let them just soak up that delicious, delicious butter. Absolutely delicious. We'll get all that butter out. And then when I made all these biscuits up, you put clear wrap over the top and put them in the deep freeze. And when you have the day that you're going to cook them, all you have to do is take them out of the deep freeze two or three hours possibly before you're going to cook them. Have them nice and soft and warm, ready to go in the oven, and they're out of this world. Delicious. Now these you want to let sit at least five minutes before you serve. The reason is, is they're kind of settling in, and if you serve them too quick, they're going to be crumbly, and you're going to think, oh, what did I do wrong? So you want to have them five minutes. Same thing with a lot of other breads, cornbreads and things. Let them sit in the pan for five minutes. So we will be right back in five minutes' time, and I'll show you how pretty they look. Okay. Now we are back. The biscuits have been resting for about five minutes. Now let's get out that nice big one that was the very last one. And I know this sounds kind of funny, but the old frontier people used to call the last biscuit the dog biscuit because sometimes it didn't always turn out pretty because it was all the leftover pieces. But today it turned out beautiful. So let me show you. This beautiful little, nice, big, fluffy, beautiful biscuit. Now I'm going to cut it in half and stick some butter in there. And we will see what it looks like. If you can see, I'm going to be cutting it in half. And you can see how easily it cuts. And look at the steam coming out. Now we're going to put in huge amount of butter and we're going to let that delicious biscuit melt in that butter. Now this biscuit can have anything to go with it. You can use honey, you can use uh, jelly, you can use even maple syrup, but in a minute I'm going to start a video called gravy. The the sweet cream gravy that we're going to put over these biscuits. So there will be another video on gravies and we're going to use these beautiful biscuits to show. But this one right now is getting ready to be eaten, I think. Looks delicious. So you take care. Thank you so much for watching today. And don't forget to touch the like button to also subscribe and touch the bell button. That way you will be notified when you see when the new videos are coming out. And thank you so much for watching and I love all of you. And let me hear from you. You can write in the comments below and let me know what you think. Uh, also, if you have ideas on other cooking shows, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. So in just a minute, our, our Things are going to get started. We're going to set up and make gravy, white cream, beautiful gravy to go over these biscuits. Okay, we will see you later. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.